guys, this is Oscar. I'm back from the Assessment Teaching and Learning Conference where there was a lot of engaging discussions among educators about how best to create video content for their students. Uh, first off, the feedback was tremendous about how important video feedback is, but additionally, uh, you know, one thing that kept coming up is that they had tried out some amazing piece of software, uh, but the problem was that it cost $300 and their school wouldn't pay for it, or they couldn't find a way to get captions unless they did some sort of really crazy workaround where they would play a video back into Google Docs, all sorts of things like that. And so our purpose here today is to have an entirely free, open source kind of-ish pipeline that gives everything students need. It has webcam feedback so that they can actually read my lips, they can understand my facial intonations, and develop some sort of personal relationship with me. Number two, we want to have our hotkeys displayed. And if I turn on the window, you can see this for a second. I think I need to, there. So if you see this, this is, these little mouse clicks, or if I say control S or something, it'll display the hotkey over here. And then lastly, we want captions so that we address universal design and if students are hard of hearing or they prefer having the feedback of text at the same time, we're addressing their education needs. And through this setup, I've got it all. So your first thing is going to be open broadcast their software. And if I turn this on, plus a black body, I'm going to turn this text off. You can see the basic setup here. First you have over here scenes, and these are essentially open broadcaster softwares. Uh, bookmarks for setups that you have. So for instance, I have one on my laptop where it doesn't have my uh, webcam footage and it doesn't record anything because, uh, and it also records at very low frames per second because the assumption is that uh, I'm just going to not have any audio to it and I'll speed it up and it's fun to document even if it's just video footage of my desktop. So this is the one I have and over here inside of this bookmark for UDL recording I have all my various devices. First, I have a capture device, so this is going to my webcam. Uh, I also have a window capture device, which is where we get our text. So this down here, our captions, is coming from a website called webcaptioner.com. And it has a great little tutorial here, which made me so happy because they're using the Blender Open Movie Project to get shots. And anyways, it goes through the steps, but essentially what you do is you hit start captioning right here, this big button, and that'll give you this big window. Down here is where you start the captioning. And if you click into the menu on this, there's this secondary new window button. That's going to give you this pop-up. So now you should be seeing both at the same time. Bit of a matrix setup. In open broadcaster software, what we do is we create a window capture with this plus button, and then you're going to navigate to that chrome.exe. If it's not showing up for you, uh, when I started this, I had black text, and that could be because you have hardware acceleration turned on. So to adjust that in Chrome, what you would do is click on your settings. You would search for hardware acceleration and you could turn this off and relaunch Chrome and then it'll show up if you're having that problem. Next up we have our... so we have captioning and we have video footage and the last thing about that is on these windows you can grab the corners and scale them up but more importantly if you hold alt you can custom crop it so this is how you can get rid of that Chrome web URL up there and instead just see the feedback that we actually want. So next up is what we're actually going to be using. In my case it's Photoshop so I'll turn off this black body and over here in Photoshop you can see something I'm using and this is where I would start thinking about how to customize this for my personal use. So you should be able to see that if I do something like control A or select all, it gives you control A as a hotkey. Down in the little up carrot where you can adjust your programs, I think it's on my other monitor, so I can't show you where I get it, but you can actually get Karnak back up. 
Uh, Karnak is a key, keystroke visualizer, and it's really, really nice. So you can go in and adjust these things. The main thing is, in my case, you want to adjust the offset so that you don't have any problems with feedback. So I wanted to make sure that this is far enough off that it's not conflicting with my layers panel. And the same goes for my captions. I want my captions somewhere that it's not necessarily blocking any information, but it's still visible. So for instance, I might up the size. That's better. So now you can see this hotkey a little bigger. I might reduce the mouse size too. Anyways, Karnak is really cool. And so now if I'm doing something like moving these layers up and down, they can see that it's control brackets that's moving layer 6 up and down. He's so cute. So hopefully uh, that creates like the perfect setup. We have audio and video footage. We get captions telling them what is happening. And they can actually also see uh, the tactile information of what I'm doing in this program when I do something like switch my brush tool or crop or control P for print and a lot of times having that dense hotkey knowledge is important but you don't necessarily see it uh, over uh, just a plain use of the program so anyways I hope this setup is useful to you uh, let me know what you think like share subscribe oh yeah one last thing about uh, open broadcaster because this is, in fact, the program that we're using here. If you go to these settings, you can see some of the things that you can mess with. What I oftentimes use is uh, I set up custom hotkeys for start recording and stop recording. And this lets my videos feel a little more uh, clean because you don't see me starting the program and then running it. Instead, you just see me stopping. Uh, the program starts automatically rather than being inside of Open Broadcaster's UI. The other thing is I actually adjust my scale down. I don't want to fill my computer up with millions and millions of gigantic videos. So I reduce my scale from 1920 by 1080 to 1280 by 720. And then additionally, you can adjust your output places, so where it's going to go. Sometimes I've worked with different formats. FLV is a fine video format, but it's not necessarily uh, what you might want to use if you're trying to bring that into a production environment. And it's not necessarily as easy to edit. Uh, so you might change that to uh, a different container. <clears throat> and then lastly, for video output, I oftentimes reduce the FPS value because that will save a lot of the um, file from being too big. If you're doing something that is streaming, you can actually stream to YouTube and other services. And I don't know, that's Open Broadcaster in a nutshell with video footage, with hotkeys, and with UDL captioning in real time. Pretty cool. Like, share, subscribe.